Well, as you know, we've been going through a lot of the older pictures from back in the Doug Sturt diary days, and I stumbled on one a little while ago. I said, man, I didn't know he was still racing when I took this photo. Steve Roberts just turned 70 a little while ago. I actually caught him in his final season. The picture you're looking at is from Wheat Sports Speedway, August 12, 2007. By then, Steve Roberts had already been racing since 1969, started with late models back in the day. Of course, he's a North Country guy. He's out of Watertown, but eventually went to 320s, 350s. Won a championship early in his career, and now he's running a business. And his son is Adam Roberts. In case you never made that connection, he's been running with Land of Legends, and of course, he's been running up north at KM and those places for a long time as well. He's in the automotive business, Roberts Automotive Sales and Service. Opened a little bit late today, as it was somewhere in the minus 17 to minus 19 range up in Watertown. So let's head up there now. It's a little warmer here at almost four o'clock. Steve Roberts joining us now. Steve, how we doing, man? Pretty good, Doug. So how, how are you doing? I'm good, man. So you decided to just uh, not wake up early and go to work. You decided to stay home today, huh? Yeah, just taking it easy. No sense going out in the cold if you don't have to. How is business? How are things up there at Roberts Automotive? Well, we've been steady. We've been doing it for a long time. and uh, You know, some days it's good and some days it's not so good, but there's always something to do. Mm-hmm. Of course, I see you a lot. Car, car sales are, you know, hard to hard to deal with the inventory right now i've heard everybody every single person who's in the used car market tells me the same thing what you can get isn't what you want and the prices are right through the roof right yeah i thought they'd be coming down but they seem to be going up again basic supply and demand economics isn't it steve yes sir yeah yeah some of the uh you read some of the things about the car sales the dealers can't sell cars but you never know it when you go to the car sale because they're all over the the good stuff has got tons of competition to buy them yeah i know a lot of people who bought trucks and sold them a few years later for more than they bought them for so it's a, an interesting time in the market hopefully things are continuing to go there uh very well for you of course you've been out with your son must be fun to watch your son and uh and, and his success that he's had and of course uh you know it's always up and down isn't it yeah it comes down to uh the amount of work we put in i guess you know we uh, work at it pretty hard but there's still always room for improvement i guess yes there is Let's go back to 1969. I was eight years old. It was the middle of the 60s at that point. Watertown Fairgrounds, late model. What brought you out there? How'd you get out there in the first place, Steve? Well, my dad was always a fan, and we used to go to the races a lot when we were young kids. And uh, and a neighbor, people moved in up the street from us there, and they had a hobby sack car and a lot of activity around. I just kind of migrated up the street and hung out a little bit, started working on the cars. And I eventually got one of the cars from one of the guys, and that's what I started up with. So you were 18 at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. How did it go? Do you remember the first night? Yeah, actually, I do. I had hot lapped their cars before, and then I'd be oh, you had. doing a little messing around and, uh, when I was younger. And uh, the first night, I, I think there was like 17, 18 cars there. I think I got a, a fifth-place finish. Pretty good, huh? But, after the checkered flag, the person I got the car from, I had passed him on the last lap, <laughs> and he didn't like it, and he stuffed me into the railroad ties after the checkered flag. Well, did you not pass him cleanly, or he just wasn't happy that you passed him at all? He just wasn't happy I passed him. He didn't hit, hit me. He hung me out the dry, you know, on a loose dirt, there, and I wasn't too experienced, I guess. He piled her up into the, he used to have railroad ties for the outside wall, you know. Really? Boy, those must have hurt when you hit them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hurt the car. I don't think it hurt me. Yeah, that's that's what I meant. Yeah, but well, of course, these walls they have today don't give any more either. So I guess that has been a constant over the years. Told you know, me you kind of got indestructible. Told me you kind of got in and out at that point. Life kind of happened. When did you get more serious and, and almost become like a weekly racer? I would say the towards the middle of the seventies. I guess we were racing a late model on a regular basis. Were you doing well? I started out, yeah, we run all right. You know, I, um, I'm trying to remember, actually. You know, it's pretty hard. Yeah, we we held our own up and down, had some decent runs. We used to race on the pavement on Sunday and on the dirt on Saturday. You know, so Evans Mills was expired. pavement? Yes, the Evans Mills was pavement, yeah. Okay. Of course, the year you told me that things really got going, end of 78, 79 was your big year, wasn't it? Yeah, that's when I um, 
I built a car of my own from the ground up and uh, had some help from some local guys, you know, doing some stuff for me. But mostly I did the whole car, built the engine and everything, and then we had a success with it. It was a Firebird, and over the winter I changed it to a Vega body and did a, a lot of lightning to the car. That was a big year in 79. We won the championship there and well over 13 races, 13 races total, I think. I had one one fifth place finish, and the rest were all third or better. And I had twenty six shows that year. So you were just consistent as all heck with that new car. So this was like that sixty seven yeah. to sixty nine Firebird frame. Yeah, it was a. Uh, well, it was the same yeah, frame all three years, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the like the on the sub like the sub frames in the front and everything. So uh, yeah, yeah, we had to have. A, weld the subframe onto the whatever else you had. Yeah, they would tighten it up, basically, is what it would do, right? Run it right, basically, like uh, where the doors would be, pretty much, is how you would tie them together, right? Right, right. Yeah, I had a 79. It was a, it was a frame, you know, a race car with a body put on it. It wasn't uh, right. a car that you put connectors in or something. Yeah, yeah, you stripped it all the way down to the frame and built a race car. Right, right. Gotcha. My first car was a 69 Firebird. We had troubles with the frame. That's how I know <laughs> a little bit about that. So yeah. so when did the old 320 Modifieds and everything all happen? You know, I want to say in 86, I think, they stopped running them. Well, that's when they stopped Remember? running them. Okay. I think so, but I'm not sure of that date. 86, 87. They were still running them in, in, in Canada and stuff, but I'm not sure about can and we had a new Kniesel car at that time. That was 1980, right? Uh, no, 1980. We, we I still had my own stuff back then. But did you move to modified yet, or were you still late models at that point? Yeah, I switched to modifieds in 1980, 81, 82, 83, 84, and I had a independent front end car, and then they switched to so you had to have a straight axle, so we had to build a new car, and and I had limited success with it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. We we weren't contending for any wins or nothing, but we were there all the time. Okay. And for those of you guys who are from Oswego, yeah, the straight front axle independent suspension thing has gone back and forth in a lot of different forms of racing uh, over the years. When did you go to a 358? It would have been in 86, I believe. Were they better at that point? Were there more parts available? Did, what, what led everybody to go from 320 to 358? Because for a while they did race together, right? Yeah, the biggest thing was, you know, was 30-some cubes, you know, that was a big deal. 30-some cubic inches more, and they were flat pistons, but we got a lot of compression out of them. So the 320s were really, uh, you know, they were being obsolete. They just weren't capable of keeping up anymore. So as we look at this picture, and Steve's looked at the picture. I sent it to him a couple of weeks ago uh, just to make sure that he had it. What were we doing in 2007 at Weedsport? Oh, uh, I would just say it was probably a three fifty eight qualifier race or something. Was that your last season? That, that was pretty much my last race. I think I don't think I raced myself much after that on a regular basis. Okay, did you qualify that night? Do you remember or, or no? Yeah, yeah. I don't think I ever didn't qualify. Okay, what is it that, that was not a? Yeah, because you've been racing them a lot by then, so you didn't just show up to races. You were. Going there, hoping to win. Only about a minute left now, Steve. Is again the time yep. goes so fast. What was it that finally got you to say, "All right, it's time to hang up the helmet"? Uh, my oldest son got out of the navy. He drove my car for a while at Can Am, and uh, he was did quite well with it. But then he had to back off because his family issues or whatever. And then I raced some more, and then Adam come along and wanted to race, and he started in 2010, I think, and. Uh, we raced a little bit here and there, and just kind of, I kind of stepped aside, let them guys try to do it. Mm-hmm. Biggest problem is doing the work and driving it too. Got so only had one or two guys. Most of the guys that helped me had, you know, got married, moved on, and some have moved out of town, and kind of lost touch a little bit. And I was doing it just myself and one other person most of the time. That's the realities of racing, and we are the realities of time. I have to make us shut this down. Steve, I'll be in touch. I'll get up to Watertown soon. I'll see you, but thank you for your time. Guys, hit the blue E. Make sure to subscribe, share, turn on the likes, uh, all the notifications, and we will see you guys again. We've got more stuff today for you.